Don Henderson. I'm so happy to have you with me today. I've been looking forward to this little chat and you've always been a favorite of mine. You know that song. And a vice versa. So fun with you at the Tahoe event in 2019, property up there. And you were the star of the show. And even my 20 somethings at the time, they just thought you were a hoot. Their eyes glaze over when I talk to them, but they just couldn't get enough of you. So that's a lot. So Don, that was one of the the better meetings that I've ever attended. One of the uh, it, it was small. The speakers were top shelf. Uh, took the time to answer a question, and everybody there was serious. That that was one of the better meetings that I've been to. Not you, to, you and not to mention being in Lake Tahoe. That yeah. had a lot to do with it. That was super, super special. Anyway, so Tom, tell me about your live events. You've been doing live events for years and years. And there's rumor that this next one coming up in San Antonio at the end of the month might be your last time. Tell me about that. Yes, I'm 76 years old and have COPD. And it's just, just a burden to travel. This might be my last. I may be going on a seminar of retirement. It just depends on what my health is, but we'll see next year if I'm feeling better and I get some more stitches in me or something, maybe I can do another one, but it'll be somewhere here local or I might be doing some Zoom or some virtual. Wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah, definitely. I just wanted to have this quick chat just to see if I can get the word out about your event. I want you to be totally sold out. And I think you're pretty close, but there's a few seats left. For anyone who hasn't, who doesn't know you yet, maybe they're new to my list or new to the no investing world. Just tell us a little bit about you. Give us that, that nutshell of who's Tom Henderson and why do you do what you do and why do you love it? Way back in, the, in Texas, that's, I'm from Dallas. And I was going to get my real estate broker's license. And back then, all you had to do to just go straight to your broker's license without any sales or any other experiences, if you'd passed enough college credit courses that the Texas Real Estate Commission accepted, you could go straight for your broker's license. Okay. My, my degree was in finance and economics, so I had enough hours just to go straight for my broker's exam. And I took it, and back then, you would sit down, and it was number two pencil, and you'd mark it off, and you'd get through and hand it into the, what do you call them, the Prosper Proper, and then he'd take them to Austin, and Austin would run them through the computer, and you'd just get a letter back saying, pass or failed. And I got my letter back and said, passed. Now, I don't know how I did on that test. I got no clue. But I just know they were asking some dumb questions. I just, but what I made on it, I have no idea. So I took my little letter. I hadn't gotten my broker's license yet, but they're saying it's coming. And I took my letter to one of the bigger brokerages in Dallas. And I said, I'm going to be a broker. And I'm going to want to be working for you guys. And you're going to teach me how to make a million dollars. And they said, boy, that is fantastic. We're having a seminar or meeting this this next Friday. We have a speaker coming in to us, and uh, we want you to come and attend. I said, fantastic. So I walked in, and, and Don, said, there's a couple, 300 people in there. It was big. Like I say, this is one of the bigger brokerages in Dallas County. And I was introducing myself, and people were saying, yeah, you got here in time. I can't believe he's finally here. And, and that. So I said, right up in the front and when he walks in and they introduce him it was a standing ovation i went my gosh yeah. and so i sit down and he starts talking and he says when you hold an open house you want to have the coffee hotter than usual so they'll take them longer to drink it and they will stay there longer and it will give the appearance of activity uh and yeah, and I'm looking around, and people are taking notes. <laughs> and I don't know, it was a God thing. I don't know what happened, but I just get up and start walking down the aisle. And everybody's head is turning watching me. And the broker who was 
who I talked to before came right to me and said, where are you going? It's just started. And I said, if this is what you're going to teach me, I don't want to learn. And so I get in and get in my car and I say, Tom, what have you done? You've just told the biggest brokerage in Dallas to bend over and crack a vertical smile. What are you going to do now? On the radio, back then, you'd have the, the only hour news. And then after they gave the news for about five minutes, you would have five minutes of some guests that was on there. And they, they're going to be in Dallas and whatnot. And this one happened to be a guy by the name of Art Hamill. And he was going to be teaching a course on the, the next day on how to buy businesses with nothing down. And he would just get, he just gave it, so, you know, he wasn't over five to ten minutes. And I said, man, this sounded interesting. You got me. So I drive out there and I take his course and it was just over my head. But I, I told him what I was doing. And he said, you need to go to the real estate exchange convention in Las Vegas next week. Yeah. So I go there and it was at Caesar's Palace. They gave me two, oh, they look like Dallas phone books of properties for exchange all over the world. And I'm going, what? And in between some of the sessions, they would have round tables. And the round tables were, quote, experts teaching you one thing and another. And uh, they had Miller Schwab there, Barney Zick, and some of the big names. And I'm listening to them. I said, what is going on here? And one of the people there took me under their wing. And Don, we were sitting there at, they had title companies there and they weren't passing out pens and calendars. They were doing deals. Doing deals. Oh, yes. This was back in the day where you had the machine where you put a, put a document in it and around and around and around and around and do something and it to someplace else. And we were at Chicago and here they go. They give them one document, and the title company guy said, it's coming to you. And it's all right, all right, we received it. All right, yeah, we've got the cashier's check. All right, done deal. And I said, told the guy, what happened here? I said, this guy just, one guy traded some raw land for an apartment in Chicago. I said, didn't they even look at it? No, they didn't think they needed to. I said, you guys are crazy. So I took it, they had a, one of the instructors there was, I took a, after convention, it lasted a week, I took a, a seminar that he was giving. But it, it was a humbling experience. Uh, my degree's in economic and finance, and I'm supposed to know this. I, I smoked at the time, and if anybody's seen me, I'm on oxygen now. If you're smoking, here's your 10 second ash chew and quit. I would get up and smoke, take the walk outside to smoke a cigarette, and I'd come back and I had missed the thing. I still didn't understand the word he was saying. And at the end of it, I went up to him and he said, Hey, this is humbling. I didn't understand you. So this was an advanced class. And he gave me a couple of three other things to go to him. So I started attending those classes. And all these exchanges that had to do with notes. And I just didn't understand it. And finally, I went up to Salt Lake City. And I took a course with John Mervin. And there were 12 of us there. On who? John Mervin, B E R V E N. Mervin. John yeah, B Mervin, B E R V E N. And yeah, he was teaching for creative real estate. And there was something like $130 or something, I don't know. And I got $75 off for attending the convention. It didn't cost hardly anything. And I don't know what it was. I think it's because I had just let it sink. It was just sinking in and sinking in. But finally, it clicked. Everything just clicked. And when I'd get back, I'd get on my calculator and, and my wife and say, look at this, look at you, and we can get a 38% yield of it. And she said, would you put that down and go to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hiding under your covers with your financial cash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I'd be up in the kitchen looking over documents. and I bought my first note and I did everything wrong but buy it. And then I took a sanity test and I failed. 
and that qualified me to be a note buyer. So I've been, I've been buying notes ever since, and uh, it was so much fun back then. Uh, this is where I learned a lot of notes. I started learning for myself concepts, not just techniques, but the concepts that a note has variables, the number of months, the interest rate, how much the loan is, or present value, the payments, and then what is it worth in the future. And you tweak one of those and the other one goes up or down. And it's just amazing what you can do, especially if you make in real short. It's, I call them obscene yields. Actually, some of mine get more than obscene. They're porno. They, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. But one thing, I just so relate to you saying, I just got so addicted to the financial calculator because I just felt so powerful and so smart. Oh, doesn't it? I could just figure out a few of these things. And really to this day, Tom, I don't know how all the buttons work and I'm not the best whiz at talking about all the things, but I only have to know five buttons to make That's it. That's five it. That's it. Buttons. <laughs> and I made a business work. And But you just know all these tips and tricks. You just know strategies and concepts. And I think you're just so entertaining and fun to listen to. I just want to, anyone who doesn't know Tom, or even if you do, and you've never seen him live, or you've seen him live and you want to go see him again, I just wanted to introduce Tom and really recommend that you connect with him. It's the salt of the earth people, the, the old school, because when I was young in the industry, I barely, I started attending conferences in the late 90s and into the early 2000s quit my nursing job, but I was going to Noteworthy in the old days when it was before it changed hands. And yeah. Henry Dvorkin uh, was there and he took me under his wing a bit. And he's the one that taught me. He said, don't be a broker, be a buyer, be an investor. And that one decision changed the trajectory of my life and made all the difference. And I, after all the education that I had, I was still scared to death to pull the trigger and buy my first note. And he just walked me every step of the way, even though I felt like I should have known better. And it, it was so sweet. So like you, you're on the level of those guys, Bill Broadbent, he was still around. I, I just poured over his book, Owner Will Carry. He had it from a real estate agent uh, perspective. So between that, Laura Lay, and those were some of the, I learned my values and the note culture from you guys, from your genre of people. Although I don't think I met you until a little bit later, but like you're, you represent that old guard and that kind of value structure and legacy that I want to carry forward. So I just think it's a great opportunity to get to know Tom and Tom, why should people come to your event? What are you going to teach them there? Oh, that's Mainly, I try to teach, especially people who are new, they don't have any money, and I can teach them how to get obscene yields with small amounts of money. The third, to give you an example, in the 10 for 12 technique that I teach, and I've changed that from technique to concept, the 10 for 12 concept. That is, I'll give you, I'll buy 10 payments for the right, to, I'll give you enough for 10 payments for the right to purchase 12 payments. For instance, if your payment is $1,000 a month, I'll give you $10,000 now, and for the next year, I'll receive the payments. My yield on that is 35.07%. I don't care what, I don't care what the numbers are. Terms are on the note. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't care what the numbers on the note are. When I learned this, I mean, I was like, yeah, I was staying up with that calculator day in mind until I actually really, until I understood it, not just being able to say something. And when I understood it, I went, wow, just a whole new world opened up to me. And I was buying real estate doing, on, on these terms, too. The first 10 for 12 I did, it was a million five piece of property. It was a ranch right outside of Dallas. It wasn't a ranch. It didn't have a house on it, but it was land and had a barn. Or that. It was a million five. And this investor who I had been cultivating for the, for almost a year, 
and it was no it was I forgot, but the payments were twelve thousand and something, twelve thousand two hundred a month. And the guy was needing money now, and he's wanting to sell it at closing. And I had finally developed this one rich investor. I've been working on him for almost a year, taking him to breakfast and showing him on the calculator, the concepts, and just a little by little. And he was, I could tell his eyes got a little bit bigger every time I talked to him. And when I, the guy called me and said, would I, would I purchase this note? And I said, at closing, I, I can give you 10 for 12. And so that'd be what, 125,000? And he said, I need 150. And I've gone to this day. I don't know why. I, it was a God thing. I said, okay, but I'm going to have 16 payments instead of 12. And I didn't know what the yield would be. I didn't know anything. I just said it. And he <laughs> said, all right. He said, all right, let's do it. I went, oh, Lord, what do I do now? Uh, <laughs> when you're in this position, the correct response is, well, I'm going to have to go rearrange some assets. Let me call you in the morning. So I went to my investor and told him about it. And he knows the property up there. He knows that it's fifty million five, given 150000 because you're going to be in first lien position. is pretty, pretty good. And he was going to get a 9% yield. And at first, he was going to buy the whole thing. And then I would get, I don't know, $3,000 a month out of it. And we were getting down to it. He said, Tom, I like all of this, and I'm willing to give you a chance, but I don't like it that you don't have anything in it. And I said, I can scrape up 10000 So I said, after that, then I'm gonna, you may see me on TV because I'm going to have to rob some banks. Huh? And he said, 10000 enough. Yeah. To make a short story long, we ended up doing it. I would get 2000 dollars a month for the next 16 months and I had 10,000 into it and my yield was 300 and some odd percent actually it was more than that because I didn't have $10,000 but I did have credit at the bank and I went to my bank and I said I want to borrow $10,000 for 90 days and they say no it's going to have to be for six months I said boy you drive a hard bargain and, and, you know, that's about 2% simple interest. Yeah. So, so that made my yield. It's actually, when you put it in an IRR, your computer goes crazy because there's two or three ways to, but it's actually infinity or lazy eight. Yeah, because, I, I, I love breaking the, I love breaking the calculator that way. It's because yeah. of the infinity return. Yeah, infinity, and it, it does it all the time. But I, like I tell my class, you have the time value of money, but you also have the money value of time. You you can make $1 a month and still have an uh, infinity yield. So, you know, you want to be careful about that. But, yeah, that was the first one I did, and I was scared to death. I did not know what I was doing. I had no clue whatsoever. That investor that I had worked with knew I knew what I was talking about. He knew the land. And this just came, hey, I know that if I'm going to be lending this, I want to look all the documentation over now, mind you. Yeah. And he knows, hey, I've got $150,000 into this $1.5 million uh, land out here that I know is worth that. I feel warm and fuzzy on that. That's so. Great story. You and I are similar. There's a lot of people that they go the route of big funds and they get all these, they pull a ton of money, hedge funds and other entity structures. And that's great for some people. But for me, I'm a boutique operator. I don't have any aspirations to run a big fund. That's a lot of stress. That's a lot of, uh, extra moving parts. And I just have learned, I don't need to do high volume, to know how to make a little bit of money and a, a nice, comfortable little deal flow go a really long way. Cause I get two deals out of one because of knowing both sides of real estate and paper, real estate notes that dance between property and paper. I usually get two deals out of every one deal. And then usually there's one or two other surprising ways that you can monetize all along the way that 
it's not on the radar for most people. Yeah, I'm the same way. I, I like Gordon Moss. Is uh, he's another uh, speaker and investor that, that I respect. He said, "Think small and keep it all." Think small and keep it all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Gordon had a few good zingers back in the day when I was trotting around on the speaking circuit with him. It was a lot of fun. I, I always got a lot out of what he had to say. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's just one thing I'll be teaching uh, others. Some do's and don'ts with raps. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe these days. That is a big topic. Yeah. And uh, how to buy real estate using notes and then how to sell it. One of my techniques is using wraps. Let's say you buy something for 200000 and you put there on 20%, and you have a, a note, and they're, sell, or they're selling it to you, and you're paying it 6%. You wrap that note with the same, or for the same price. You could, I'm saying the same price. I'm exaggerating. For the same $20,000, yet you're charging 9%. And you'll have something like 400 cash flow. Now, what's your yield there? You don't need one. It's infinite. You have no money of your own. In fact, you could take 25000 down and get paid $5,000 to create passive. You that, say that out loud. What I try to give is just the worst case scenario where what you're going to get there now is just $400 positive cash flow with no money out of your pocket. That's like buying a note. With no money. Yes. If you're not going to learn how to do it yourself and find your own deal flow, you have to have big wads of cash. Mm -hmm. Brokers or something else. But if you will get into the business, even if you're not doing it as a business, even if it's just to buy your own personal residence, these things will just make and save you so much money. It's incredible. Tom, I don't, I want to take up too much more of your time here. I just wanted people to be introduced to you if they don't already know. And I just want to be excited for you to have your live class. And I look forward to connecting with you afterwards and seeing what else we might put would love to. I sure, I sure respect and appreciate you so much for what you bring to the industry. And you're just an absolute gem. And I appreciate you being on the call with me today. Can I give them my contact information? I forget. <laughs> How do you sign up for <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be important. You, you, you'd like that? Yeah, here's my email address. It's Tom, T-O-M, at H-P, as in Henry Paul Notes, N-O-T-E-S dot com. H-P Notes dot com. Tom? Yeah. HPnotes.com if you're interested in the San Antonio seminar, email me and I'll tell you how to get there. Or here's my phone number, 214-232-8949. Say it again a little louder. 214-232-8949. Folks, there you have it. And if you can't come to his live event, look, go and buy his courses they're very extremely reasonably priced and just awesome value all right tom it's been great to be with you here today and i wish you a, a really wonderful experience Down it's time. always great to talk with you don always great all right take care tom toodles